Hey guys, in this video, we're just going to talk a little bit about vertex groups in Blender. Blender has a very, very powerful feature with vertex groups where, in case you haven't noticed, is used very strongly in rigging in the fact that each vertex group maps each bone to which vertices to actually deform. So that's how vertex groups are used in rigging. However, it's not the only use of vertex groups. They're actually very, very powerful in other uses as well, which includes modifiers, for example. So I'm going to show you exactly how this applies and how it's useful. And uh, it's very, very simple. I'm just going to show you an example. Let's go to the modifiers tab with this cube here. Not all, but many of these modifiers do have the option to apply only to the vertices in a vertex group. But I'm just going to go ahead and choose the solidify modifier for now. And as you can see here, the solidify modifier just creates, you know, a more <laughs> solidified mesh. I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly how this works by cutting this in half and deleting this side. So we have a bit of a cross section here. So this makes a little bit more sense uh, visually for people to understand exactly how the solidify modifier works. Once we do that, you can see that there, it applies to the entire mesh, basically. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a vertex group that applies only to, let's say, oh, half of it. Let's just say this half, right? This half, I'm going to assign a weight of 1. Okay, so that's a weight of 1. Everything else is not even part of the vertex group. It doesn't matter. So we're just going to go to the modifiers tab now. And uh, I can name this something cool like solidness or something. I don't know. And we're just going to go ahead and select the group under the modifiers tab for the solidify modifier. And select solidness. And as you can see here, it only applies to that vertex group. Now, of course, it has to blend between these two vertices because it uses faces. But that is exactly how that works. And what we can do, which is really cool, is we don't have to just do a weight of 1. We can do a weight of 0.5, for example. We're just going to like do 0.5 here. It can be anything you want. And as you can see here, it's not as strong as this moment over here. So we can have this one be like, I don't know, 0.15. And we have just a little bit more solidifiedness over here. Solidifiedness. Solid. Solidness. Anyway, you know what I mean. So this is basically the application of vertex groups with modifiers. You can use this for a lot of different modifiers. There's also a very powerful application, not just for modifiers, but also for physics. As you can see here, cloth modifier falls onto the ground. So it works. I can prove to you that it actually has the cloth modifier applied to it. But uh, I'm going to show you exactly what happens when we add, for example, uh, oh, let's say a vertex group with only this one vertex in it. So let's just, let's just see what happens. I'm just going to assign this one vertex to this group. I'm just I'm going to call this pinning because that's what it is. So I'm going to show you exactly how to use the pinning group. You don't have to name it pinning. It's just nice for organization. And just check this pinning option here for cloth and select the group that you just made with that one vertex in it. It can be as many vertices as you need to, but for sake of demonstration, I want to see how this looks. And as you can see here, it just pins that one vertex. And you can make this vertex group as large as you want. So I can just create this entire side can now be pinning. So I'm just going to assign that with a weight of one. And as you can see here, let me just re-simulate that. There we go. And it just nicely pins the entire row of vertices there. I mean, hell, I can even, I mean, I can even just take the, like some middle vertices here and assign that with a weight of one and then see how that simulates. As you can see here, it uses the vertices very, very intuitively in terms of the vertex groups drive the pinning. And the weight also matters too. So actually, if I just take these, uh, the ones that I just selected, the random ones, and just give it a pinning of 0.5, it will be pinned, but it will not be pinned as strongly. So I'll show you exactly how that works. So as you can see here, it has a very interesting feel to it. It just does not immediately, it's not super stiff, but it does get pinned. Um, but you can use this for various different applications. You can use them for modifiers as well as rigging and physics. They're mostly just there to section off and assign a certain number of vertices for a particular purpose. Another fun fact about vertex groups is that even if you're not using it for rigging, you can still weight paint them. So I can go into the weight paint mode and I can actually just paint the pinning vertex group. So I can just do that. And as you can see here, it adds that to the pinning vertex group. It's whatever group I have selected, whether you have a bone being used or not. So I can just do that. This group, of course, is not being used for pinning at the moment, so it doesn't actually affect anything. Although I could switch it out to this group, and suddenly the cloth modifier uses that for the pinning. And uh, it's great. So very, very powerful. Another application for it, just real quick, is particles. So I just want to show you exactly how to use it for particles. Just go to the particle setting, create a new particle system, and then under here, you have uh, vertex groups, an entire section dedicated to vertex groups, and you have density. Now, density is the one that I like to use it for. You can use it for a bunch of other things here as well, but let's say I had, you know, 
a pinning, not not a pinning. I'll just call this density here, and let's just give it uh, oh a few more vertices to play around with. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put it here. Actually no, I'm gonna put it here, just in the corner here. Something random, a weight of one. And uh, I'm just gonna go to the particle settings it's under density, select density, which is the vertex group we just created. I can also you know paint some stuff here if I really wanted to, just to show you how that works. And then. I'm going to simulate this, and as you can see here, it only emits particles from that vertex group. It's very, very powerful. You can use it for whatever you need to, and uh, that's it. That's just an overview for vertex groups, and I hope you guys learned something.